Hello YouTube viewers. Today we have a late 2000s model Impala that will not shift out of park. You push this button all you want and this thing is not shifting out of park. Um, the same problem that we'll get into uh, also can cause a different symptom which would be the key wouldn't come out of the ignition. And the reason is there's a wiring harness that communicates between the uh, key and the shifting system that tells it that for and the brake for that matter that tells it don't shift out of park unless the brake is depressed and also don't allow the key out of the ignition if the shifter isn't in the park position so if the wiring harness that's connected to the shifter is not uh, intact, it's losing communication with both the brake pedal and that ignition um, uh, key and uh, won't let it, um, either won't let it shift out of park or won't let you remove the key. In this case, uh, we're lucky, it's just that the shifter will not shift out of park. Um, if you're stuck in a parking lot with this problem, it's pretty simple to uh, get you at least to avoid a tow so you can get it to a dealership. Um, you can just get a big flathead screwdriver like this and pry your shifter frame out. I'm not going to use the flathead screwdriver to pry the shifter frame out because I don't want to scratch anything. But you could get it done with just that one tool. Um, instead I use like a, um, let's see if I have it here, there we go. I use like a chisel here, oh, that's probably not called a chisel, but whatever it is. And just pop this thing out and once this is out with your long flat headed screwdriver there is which you are probably not going to be able to see down there maybe yes you can so you can see that in the um, lower left quadrant there that looks like a screw head sticking out that is a manual release button where if you can stick this screwdriver down in here and push that in, hold your brake down and you'll be able to shift out of park. Um, and I guess I can show you that that works. So if you can get this down here and push that in, it will shift. So that's a manual override that'll uh, allow you to avoid a tow. Um, but the actual real fix to this is going to require um, a new part. So the easiest way to handle this is new wiring harness. This is AC Delco part number PT3923, GM part number 13583923. Well, sorry, my uh, camera just popped up with use intelligent contrast. Okay. GM number 13583923. So uh, this was about a $15, $20 part um, all over eBay and Amazon. Pretty easy to come by. Uh, what you're going to see when we um, take this whole um, console out is that one of these wires has come uh, detached from this um, clip and it's the one that's telling it that the car is in uh, park in there, or excuse me, that the uh, brake is depressed and therefore it's allowed to shift out of park. So let's get started. The tools that I have that you need for this are, I have a heat gun down here that um, you use to sync up this shrink, heat shrink. Um, you could probably get away without that as long as you have a good crimper like these. Uh, I also have wire strippers, Phillips head screwdriver, a drill with a Phillips head screw bit, and um, I'm in Michigan so I need some warm gloves to work with usually, but right now this beer is keeping my hands warm and uh, that's an optional accessory. I've heard some people say that uh, you can do work on cars without a beer, but I can't vouch for that, I haven't seen it. So we'll take these two screws out. Don't lose them, obviously. I want to turn the car off. <laughs> and the 
believe we need to remove these four screws in the console, but I'm not sure about that. We're gonna find out. You do have to remove this, um, there's a felt cover in the console that protects these screw heads. Um, you do need to remove that. And my drill's not fitting in for these. So I have to use trusty six in one. Four. Three or four, and if it's like the one on the other side, I should be able to get this one. Okay, so I have four screws removed from the console here and two from up here by the shifter. And it does feel like it's gonna remove, release for me. And we are finding a whole bunch of loose change, which is payday for us, helping us recoup that investment on the $20 wiring harness. There is a plug here on the side. And this whole console does easily remove and really we're just going to remove it as much as we have to uh, to get in here maybe that's all the way maybe not uh, we're going to leave it like that it gives us the access that we need So I know I'm going to be just get uh, lambasted in the comments for how I didn't know how this clip works. Sorry, I'm not a professional mechanic. Um, this green piece, you guys need to hit me up in the comments and tell me what the hell the point of this is. Is this was supposed to, uh, I think that this is a lock to prevent it from coming in and coming out. I think that's a lock. Okay, well anyways. Uh, we got it out, and the original um, OEM from the manufacturer uses four of these uh, six connections. And the only reason that I know um, where this black one's supposed to go is I can see the broken off wire in there. So this is going to be crucial for me to know which of these colored wires is supposed to go where in uh, my new wiring harness. So I think I am going to draw myself a map and uh, I'll be right back with a pencil. So uh, what I did was uh, document which color wire goes where into the wiring harness from a back view. Um, so the black that's pulled out in our example, which um, is I guess the wire that's telling it that the brake is depressed and therefore allow the button to depress and be able to shift out of park. That is in this number one position. Number two position is green with white stripe. Number three position is purple with white stripe. Number four position is yellow. And it looks like positions five and six straight up from the manufacturer are vacant. Um, so that's all we need to know. Now all we're gonna do is cut out the old wiring and splice in the new wiring. And that is pretty straightforward. Let's do that. I could just cut below this. Which is what I'll do. So, out with the old. And this is where you're going to need your wire strippers. 
This looks like some shitty uh, 20 gauge wire or something like that. No, it's not that small. Let's try 18. This new stuff uh, from AC Delco, this wiring harness seems to be a little bit heavier gauge. A little lower number. Let's see, is this 18? Nope, I think it's actually better than that. It's 16. Okay, so I was way off. Yeah, 16. Oh, maybe not. It is 18. 16 is too big. Yep, it is 18. Okay, now with our new clip, it's going to snap right into there. It does fit like a champ, that's awesome. So um, we just need to cut these wires off and splice them in, which we will do right now. And this might be 14. It is, it is. And remember, we only need four or six of these. I guess I don't need to strip them all, do I? But, I'll do it. Even though I'm feeling some sprinkles, starting to rain out. Okay, so back to our drawing. Positions five and six are vacant, which are these two. So I'm gonna get them out of there to avoid any confusion. Okay, so number one is going to be our black. This kit comes with crimpable heat shrink so we just put that connector in put our other black in this was the wire that was disconnected you can do these one at a time again elementary rookie mistake you guys are probably gonna crush me in the comments but do not do wiring for a living okay this is gonna be our black Good, that's in there. And in fact, yes, I know that you can do one side at a time, so I'm gonna go ahead and do these. Well, I can handle them easier. The second position is gonna be our green with white stripe. And I believe I've stripped a lot, a little bit too much off. Yeah, by a lot. I'm gonna trim these uh, copper parts back just a touch. Okay. 
All right, back to the green with white stripe. That's better. Cool. Down there tight, down there tight. Okay, third position is our purple with white stripe. Even though um, we don't really need to know those colors yet until we actually crimp the other end. But purple white stripe it's in there tight and finally our fourth position was yellow So this is a $400 fix at the dealership. So while I may not be crimping and heat shrinking things as good as the pros can do, I absolutely am comfortable that the connection will be made and it's going to work. So position one, black. Good, that cannot come out or we'll recreate the problem. Position two is green. Boy, they GM used some dinky little wiring on this. Having a hard time getting it in the connector. There we go. It actually did go that time. So, that's tight. Um, yep. Then purple is our position three. Right here. Nope, I screwed that one up. That is going to be a redo, unfortunately. Yeah, that one screwed up. So that's how tough those connectors are. I could not pull that off if I wanted to. But of course I can cut it off. And luckily, 
we have enough of these crimp crimp shrink connectors because it comes with six because that's what the harness can support even though we only need four for this job on there tight back to the purple Make sure I'm in the right position. Yes, everything is good. That is purple. And I will not screw it up this time. Yes, that is done. And finally, our last one here is yellow. There we go. Okay, so we've spliced in our new connector with position one being the black, that was why we started this whole project. Position two being green with white stripe. Position three being purple with white stripe and position four being yellow. Five and six cut off because they're vacant. All we need to do is click this back into the harness and we're good to go. But uh, these do support, um, These are this is heat shrink, so I'm gonna heat this up and it will tighten around these wires. Um, you could use some black electrical tape if you don't have a heat gun. But fortunately I do have a heat gun. Okay, so these have cooled. We've got this thing spliced in properly now. All we need to do is plug it in. We should be good to go. Plugged in. And I'm not sure if we should secure this or not. It wasn't from the factory, so I don't think I'm going to. So I'm just going to hold them here, put this factory uh, um, console back in, and we're going to test it before we screw everything down. Okay, that at least gives us enough um, enough clearance to move the shifter and test this. Key points being, does the car start, shift out of park, does the key come out? So it starts, shifts nicely out of park now without having to do anything, so we've resolved our problem. And to make sure those other connections are tight, the key does release. So we've accomplished our goal. All that's left is to uh, reassemble this, which we'll do right now. Down, that's lined up. Our four screws here are lined up. And good to go.
So got those four done. All that's left to do, there's just a little felt piece here that drops on top of them. Yoink. And then the final two screws to our project go right here. that gets threaded right. I have to push this trim piece in. And last, but not least, is cosmetic trim. And we have job well done. This is affecting uh, mid to late uh, 2000s Monte Carlos and Impalas. And uh, this is AC Delco part number PT3923. GM part number 1358-3923. And uh, don't forget if you're stranded, all you need is a long flathead screwdriver to pop this trim off. Go down and push that, uh, what looks like a screw head in. That button will allow you to at least get it out of, uh, out of park. Um, if you break one of those other wires, unfortunately, and can't get your key out, that's a much more difficult situation because you can burn your battery down. But uh, $20 fix instead of a $400 dealer fix. Uh, hopefully this is helpful for you and uh, save you some cash and get you out of jam. Thanks a lot.